Hey everyone, today I want to talk about the importance of getting an engine oil analysis done, especially on a vehicle you plan on keeping for a longer period of time because you never know what hidden issues may arise from an analysis. Now, at 130,000 miles, I did an engine oil analysis on this car because I was doing 10,000 mile oil changes. So I wanted to see how the oil was holding up doing 10,000 mile intervals with the high amount of highway driving I was doing. Now, I was using Mobile One full synthetic oil at that time, just the standard Mobile One oil. And since then, I've switched to the Costco Kirkland full synthetic oil. And I wanted to see how that was stacking up against the Mobile One. Now, basically, the test showed that the oil itself was doing very well, as I expected. They're both Group 3 oils. The Kirkland oil is made by Warren Distribution, which is a massive petroleum manufacturer. So it basically came back where I expected. Actually, the Costco oil actually exceeded a lot of the parameters of the Mobile One with the amount of additives that were left. So it, it did, overall, it did very good and basically what I was expecting to do. It's very comparable to Mobile One. But what I wasn't expecting was a hidden issue I found with this car that the analysis revealed. So let's take a look at the oil report and I'll show you what I mean. So starting from towards the top regarding the elements and the properties of the oil itself. So on the right side, you'll see at 130,000 miles, that was the initial test I did. And on the left side is the one I just had done. That was 160,000 miles. Now you'll see below, just below that, you'll see makeup oil added as zero for both categories because this car does not burn any oil. So I do not have to add oil to this car in between oil changes. And I do not add any additives to the oil in this car ever. So when you look through the parameters of this test, both of the oils are pretty comparable to each other. The molybdenum, boron, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, zinc, all those numbers held up really good. And if you look more closely at the report, you'll see on the left side, the uh, Kirkland Costco oil actually had a lot more of the anti-wear and additives than the Mobile One did. So it did overall, it did very well. And when you look lower towards the properties for the viscosity, it even did even a little bit better than Mobile One did. And the TBN number was pretty darn close to Mobile One. Um, it's supposed to be at least one for the total base number of additives, the TBN. The Mobile One was 3.7, this was 3.3. So overall, it was well above the safe margin of error. But there's one thing that came back that I wasn't expecting that was a problem, and that was the flash point of the oil. Now, the middle category, you'll see, that's the recommended safe minimum, or basically the values of where things should be in the properties category. Now, you'll see the average for flash, or the minimum safe flash point should be about 385 degrees, roughly. When I did the test with Mobile One 130,000 miles, it was at 395. So it was where basically the recommended where it's supposed to be at a minimum. But this time the flash point came back at 360 degrees. So we had a lower flash point below where they recommend it should be for the oil. All right, that's a little concerning. That's basically getting into an issue with fuel dilution. So let's look at the, the actual fuel percentage. On the original test, it was 0.5, half of a percent of fuel in the oil. This time it came back at 1.3. So we're showing a lot more fuel in the oil this time. You'll see that the safe recommended margin is to keep it below two. So I'm still well within the safe parameters of where the fuel dilution level should be, but it's a lot higher than it was only 30,000 miles ago. And you'll see that because of that, the aluminum jumped up just a hair. It went from five parts per million to seven parts per million in this test. So nothing crazy alarming, but it went up just a tiny bit. And they noted that in the description that the oil change showed a good report overall, but there were some items of concern that the aluminum had increased, uh, possibly from being on pistons and bearings that the flash point was lower than it should be, indicating a small amount of fuel dilution and basically they said this isn't anything that is super concerning, but it's just kind of something to keep your eye on. And then I should do a test and another 10,000 miles to see where we're at. And they noted that the TBN number showed there's lots of active additives in the oil. So we have much higher levels of fuel dilution in the oil. So the big question is what causes fuel dilution and what symptoms do fuel dilution cause in itself? For the most part, higher levels of fuel dilution will come from, it can come from your driving style, it can come from typically really short trips, a lot of idling, sitting in traffic, things like that where the car's not really moving and it's just sitting at idle for a long time. That can cause higher levels of fuel dilution, but that's not, I don't do that type of driving, I do almost entirely highway driving. So that really wouldn't affect me. You can also get high levels of fuel dilution from worn piston rings. 
However, if you have worn piston rings and oil is slipping past the piston into the crank or fuel is slipping past the piston into the crankcase, you are going to get higher uh, levels of oil into the combustion chamber, which is going, you're going to see oil coming out the exhaust pipe, you're going to smell it, and you're going to be burning oil. But this car doesn't burn any oil. So uh, it's likely not an issue with the rings itself because I would notice a drop in the oil levels. And I check the oil constantly in this car and the level never drops. So that's not it. So the most likely culprit in my case is a leaking, worn, dirty, or clogged injector. That is the most likely cause in my case for a, a higher level of fuel dilution. And if I had not done this test, I would never have known that. So that's why it's a good thing to do. So I wanted to take a little bit of a closer look to see if I could kind of figure out maybe which uh, injector was experiencing the issue. So I pulled the car in the garage the other day and I left the car outside overnight. I wanted to let it cool down because I don't want to really do anything with the engine when it's hot. So I let it sit outside overnight. I took the, took the Raptor outside, put the Corolla in the garage. I only ran the car for about 15 seconds, so the engine was basically stone cold when I brought it in here. So I pulled all the spark plugs, and I wanted to look into the combustion chamber to see if there was any difference between each cylinder. Because if you're getting higher levels of fuel into the cylinder, it might show that the cylinder might show a little cleaner since gasoline is a solvent, and it might also be washing on the piston walls a little bit of the cylinder walls a little bit and on the pistons, which would explain a little bit of a higher level of aluminum wear. That makes sense. So when I pulled the spark plugs, I did a visual inspection with a pen light, really couldn't see anything. But then I took my inspection light, my Milwaukee inspection light, and it fits inside the holes for the spark plugs. So I put one in each cylinder. Really couldn't tell a difference between the pistons themselves. One didn't look cleaner than the other. Everything basically looked uniform. Everything looked really clean, but it looked uniform throughout. I couldn't tell the difference. But what I did notice was on cylinder number three, I couldn't see it with my eye, but with the camera inside the actual combustion chamber, I could see almost what looked like a tiny bit of almost like smoke. So what I think might actually be happening is, I think injector number three might be leaking or have some sort of issue, it's clogged, and it's allowing a little bit of extra fuel to leak into the cylinder. So like letting it sit overnight, a little bit of extra fuel might have leaked and sat inside of cylinder number three. So when I started the car to pull it in the garage, it only ran for a few seconds. So it didn't really have a chance to burn everything that might have been sitting in the cylinder for that relatively small amount of time. So what I think that little bit of smoke might have been was that a little bit of excessive fuel sitting in the cylinder that got burned off when I had just started it for a few seconds. Again, it was a very tiny amount of smoke. I actually couldn't even see it with the naked eye with my pen light in the cylinder. I could only see it with the inspection camera inside the cylinder itself. So it was a very, very minute amount of what I think was smoke. So what I'm gonna to try to do to fix this issue is, I'm gonna start off doing this, this the most, because the, the numbers show that this isn't something that's really, really bad right now that has to be addressed immediately. I'm gonna go the simple route to try to fix this and see if this is the issue. I'm gonna run a few fuel bottles of fuel system treatment, fuel injector cleaner through the fuel tank in the next 10,000 miles. And I'm gonna see if that hopefully clears up the issue with, with what is most likely some sort of injector issue, dirty, clogged, whatever it may be, I'm not 100% sure what it is yet. So I'm gonna go that simple route because for $20 I can run a few bottles through and hopefully it'll fix it. Is it gonna fix the issue? Probably not, but you know what? You never really know. But the fact that it's probably a pretty small leak, it's not a huge leak, I'm gonna see how it goes from there and then I'll have the oil retested another 10,000 miles. If that doesn't fix the issue, I'm probably gonna replace the fuel injectors. Now, I, the cheapest I could find the fuel injectors, the original fuel injectors for this car was $135 online from an authorized Toyota dealer that sells parts online for a 30% discount. So they're pretty expensive. So to replace one fuel injector is 135, and if I just wanna just replace them all, it's gonna be over $500. So I'm a little surprised that an injector would fail on a Toyota with only 160,000 miles. And Toyota mileage, this is still a pretty new car, and it's relatively low stress just driving up and down the highway, going back and forth to work every day. So I'm gonna start off with probably the simple, cheap way to go, and if it doesn't work, and the next oil test at 170,000 miles shows that I'm still having an issue, with higher levels of fuel dilution, I'm probably just gonna change it. That's what I like about this 1.8 liter engine. This is a simple engine to work on, especially with these port injectors. The port injectors aren't too expensive and changing port injectors is a really simple thing to do. 
Um, it's, they're basically just held on with a couple of bolts and you have a few seals and it's a relatively easy job versus the newer engines. They're much more complex trying to track down an issue and then there's a lot more injectors to deal with. So that's why I think everyone should do an oil report like this because this issue I found had nothing to do with the condition of the oil itself, but this injector issue was so small that only a really an engine analysis report would catch this. It doesn't set off a check engine light when it's a small injector leak like this because it's not enough fuel to really show a rich condition. So I would never have known. So I'm glad I did this and found this be out before it becomes more of an issue. But like I said, you can have a car you're going to keep for a while that you care about. Spend the, you can get a basic report for $30. It's going to show you all the parameters that would show you an issue like this. I spent a little extra for the TBN test to show the total base number of additives. I like to track to see how well the oil is holding up through that full 10,000 mile oil change interval. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll keep everyone posted for the next oil change that will probably be in about five months. And I'll see if uh, running a few bottles of fuel injector cleaner through this thing corrects the issue. Because if not, we're probably going with new injectors. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.